Cisco Email Security, Advanced Malware. So we're gonna take a look at some of the advanced malware capabilities that the email security appliance offers. Um, so again, this could be cloud, this could be on-premise, doesn't really matter, there's no feature change between the platforms. So it's pretty easy to get set up. So the first thing is we'll go into incoming mail policies. And you can see in your policies, right? Again, you, this is the default policy, but you would have other policies in play here. But you can see there's a advanced malware protection um, column that we can go in and we can go in and make some configuration. So, you know, we want to enable uh, advanced malware protection for this policy. We want to do file reputation, right? And file analysis. We may want to tweak or change some of the settings here, right? So we might want to, for unscannable uh, attachments, we may want to deliver or quarantine messages with malware attachments. We might want to drop those messages. Uh, messages with file analysis pending, we can deliver as is. We can also hold that mail message for a period of time. So what that means is we can say, well, here's a file. It comes in. We don't know its disposition. Let's send it to our sandbox and wait maybe an hour or longer or less. It's configurable. But what we want to do is make sure that if that message comes back as bad, that we actually uh, don't deliver the mail. Now, Mailbox Auto Remediation, MAR, is really cool capability that if for uh, any reason malware does come back with a disposition much later, say a day later, comes back with the disposition of bad, what we can do is still go back into that mailbox. So for example, go into Office 365, pull that message or that attachment out. The message will still be there, but we'll remove the attachment. Um, so that's pretty cool capability. All right, so we know antivirus is not 100% effective, right? It, uh, depending on who you read, right? You can read 35, 50, 70% effectiveness. So advanced malware is something that you certainly wanna consider, as well as all the other capabilities that we've talked to up to this point. So we've committed the change. That's all we had to do to get this thing enabled. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna send a message, obviously with uh, something that is malicious. Now, um, as I said before, there, there's lots of layers of security in this um, solution set. So advanced malware comes further down the stream. So, so if we identify something as spam, well, we're gonna get rid of that noise right away. You'll never ever see that attachment come in with that message because it's already been dropped potentially. Uh, and therefore, there is no reason to scan it. So here what we're gonna do is we're gonna execute this .bat file. We're gonna make a, a unique uh, sample here uh, that we can test with. Now, first thing is, like all other tests, let's get up our uh, CLI to the appliance itself um, and we'll tail the mail logs so we can see what's going on. And then again, we'll send the message, we'll look at the results, we'll look at it, what it looks like on the GUI as well as the CLI to get you a good understanding of what took place. So here we'll tail uh, mail underscore logs. And it's pretty amazing, right? Because we've added this feature and it is a licensed feature, but we've added this feature. Uh, it's ready to go. It's implemented for the default policy, which typically is inherited by other policies that you have, unless there's something specifically needed to be changed for, for uh, certain individuals or groups. Uh, but we're four minutes in and we've added this layer of, of uh, capability to our security stack. Pretty simple, pretty easy. Um, and here we're gonna test it and see if the results um, also highlight the, the capabilities. For example, will this get detected and picked up by AV, right? Um, or uh, does AV miss it and we find it later on in some of the advanced capabilities like advanced malware protection? All right, now I'm just navigating back to that file. And I realize the name is obvious, right? Nobody's gonna click malware.exe, right? And again, you can get rid of a lot of this noise earlier on by just saying that certain types or certain extensions uh, you're never gonna deliver, like an executable. 
All right, so we've sent the message. And what we'll do here is uh, let's look at the uh, message logs itself and see what we see here. So we can see that the uh, antivirus engines just above that are already highlighting that they come back as clean. But the AMP file reputation came back with a verdict of unknown. So unknown now means based on policy is that we want to send that file to the sandbox to execute. Now, remember, this leverages threat grid, which is an outside looking in sandbox. So we're able to monitor uh, low level kernel access without actually being inside the virtual machine. So malware writers can't determine whether or not uh, they're being monitored. Uh, there's nothing in the virtual execution space to suggest that they're being monitored. So that file now is being sent, but again, because it's mail, we can actually hold that message before we actually deliver it to the user, right? Again, this is based on policy and how you have it configured. All right, so in our case, let's go have a look at policy uh, and quarantine, right? Virus outbreak and quarantine. And what we'll see here is Nothing shows up on file analysis for quarantine, right? Outbreak, there's nothing. But you can see it says retain for one hour, then release, right? So that's what I was talking about earlier. And this is configurable. Uh, but the goal here would be to hold that message until we get disposition back. So let's go to AMP file analysis. And we can see there's this file here. And it came back with the disposition of malicious. Okay. So let's look at the details itself. And let's show uh, the details. And you can see it drop by AMP. So this is another example of malware. So we don't have to wait for the other. Um, so file analysis is complete. And you can see it's dropped by AMP. And why? Because it came back with the disposition of malicious. And we can see that um, file analysis is completed here. Release from quarantine. Again, we're a little bit ahead of ourselves here, but you get the idea, right? So the file went up, it went to threat grid, it went through the sandbox. We didn't release any attachment or message at this point in time. We held on to it. We waited for the disposition. The disposition came back and said, this is nasty stuff that all your other detection methods have missed, right? Because that's why it was sent to the cloud in the first place for analysis. And again, you could have threat grid on-prem, but the idea here is that very quickly, uh, we were able to remediate this without having any human intervention whatsoever, right? Because it did the sandboxing, got the behavioral uh, indicators back. You can see here we've potential Tor connection, uh, malware domain detected, uh, ransomware detected, right? Threat levels very high. So it came back with a, a disposition of malware and, and we've dropped it or cut it off at its knees. So it never would have gotten delivered to the end user. Um, so that's pretty cool, right? Um, you get advanced reputation, advanced malware reputation or file reputation, right? You get file analysis in the sandbox and you get these really cool reports that kind of walk you through why we determined something as bad, right? So it goes through all those behavioral indicators, gives you a good, clear understanding of what that indicator is. So if you're building out an incident uh, uh, response report, um, you can take elements from here, very easily copy and paste those in. All the processes, the uh, processes, the artifacts, the registry activities, the file system activity, all of that was documented. And again, this is why this is when it, the file was sent to that sandbox, all of that was being recorded, right? So now we can really go back and truly understand what took place. Why was that file bad? So pretty easy capability to turn on. Less than five minutes, you're up and running.